Well, move over ghost busters. The real estate myth busters are here. Peter Kinch is a real estate financing expert and the author of the Canadian Real Estate Action Plan. Don Campbell is a real estate educator and author of 97 Tips for Canadian Real Estate Investors. And it is my pleasure to welcome Don Campbell and Peter Kinch back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Did I get that all right? I think you did. Perfect, because you yeah, helped each other on the books. Yeah, right? absolutely. absolutely, yes. How did you two meet? Did I ask you that before? <laughs> yeah, I was teaching at a, at a uh, present, I was doing a presentation here in the Lower Mainland, and I was speaking about how to, how to get mortgages without lying. Mm -hmm. I was telling them, be, be real, don't, don't sign anything that's not accurate, and all I hear in the background is, teach it, brother! And I looked up, and it was Peter, and that's our first mm -hmm. introduction. Well, now I call you Campbell and Kinch, or Kinch and Campbell. That works for Is us. Is that okay? That works for us. I'm so, so a fan of alphabetic order, Fanny. You are? So are movie stars. They yeah. say, look, I'm first, I'll be there. <laughs> what can we do? But we'll figure it out. I'll give you both equal time. There you okay, go. Okay, so uh, I was reading the paper a mm, few days ago. It said Toronto prices are Toronto's the most expensive city in Canada now. It is, and but so not just no for bargains there. What does that mean when you see that headline? Well, what it means to me is that, that that's the most expensive city in which to live. So the okay, the, that, nothing to do with it. Uh, real estate played a component in it, but that headline kind of it seems to be caught up that it's all about real estate okay. and it's not. Vancouver still is has the sure. highest average price of one point. Mm. Goodness knows what. Well, it w know. it's probably about what it costs to rent a place in Toronto because, as you know, if we'd bought a little place in Rosedale in the downturn, yes. we'd probably be richer today. But I didn't. Did any of you? There, young. No, I didn't get chance. Many to. friends did, though. Many friends did. Yes. See, they were the smart ones. Okay. First myth: Vancouver house prices to drop 14.8 percent in next two years, according to TD Economics. This is a double myth, you say. Absolutely. The first bit about that is that people read that and go, oh my goodness, my house is going to drop 14.8%. Well, that's just not the truth, because if you take a look at that, at that number, what they're saying is the average selling price of a house is going to drop 14.8%, right. which means that a lot of those $3 million uh, properties that are getting picked up right now and driving the average price up will not be sold. There won't be that many sold. So the whole average selling price, not the average price of a house, but the average selling price of a house, that doesn't mean if I own a, a property in, in South Vancouver that my pr house is going to go down 14.8%. It's very, very important for people to, to understand that you got 20% of the, of the houses that have been sold in Vancouver in the last year are 1.72 million average. There's 39% really? in yeah, 39% increase in the in those ground oriented units where people are just buying these homes. But really the average selling price of a condo as of May 2010 or 2011 here in Vancouver was $313,000. Nobody talks about that. Those prices aren't going to no, drop down. Uh, we talk about things like you can't get into this building for under a mil. No, that, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So it's just interesting uh, resale price. And you know, when you talk about average prices, it's very dangerous because uh, it includes, when, if I'm living out in uh, Maple Ridge or, mm -hmm. or Pitt Meadows or Burnaby, then I look at the average price, that includes the Coal Harbor uh, penthouses. So sure. that skews it, and I think sometimes you take the top 10%, you, you've done this research where you take the top 10%, peel those off, take the bottom 10%, peel those off, and, and get mm -hmm. into what the real numbers are. And there's, there's two things there. Number one, when you get the real numbers, it's not as drastic as it may appear, but the other thing is, let's analyze, what are people really afraid of? Oh, my property value is gonna drop of by 14.8%, oh my God! Well, yeah. are you planning to sell it? No. <laughs> yeah, but we think it's the the uh, start of the down, that the we, bubble's every, about to burst, every right? Every single the time that, that, that these, these things come out, as they did in 1995 and, and 1999 mm. and 2003 and 2007, it's the same thing. Every single time these reports come out, people panic. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The market mm. slows down because nobody knows what sure. to do. And because the, all because of the myth that if the average selling price goes down, I'm losing the same amount of money. It is just not true. Right, but you look at your own reality and you think like if Shaw fires me tomorrow, I'm pretty much selling the house because that's my retirement. Yes. But you know what's interesting? And I won't have an option <laughs> what I unless find, I, you know, meet a baron. <laughs> <laughs> what I find interesting, Fanny, is that the, um, when the news headlines come out like that, it always has a negative connotation. House prices are dropping by 14.8%. Well, the, uh, oh, that's a bad thing. Right. Well, and then when they say house prices are going up by 14.8%, well, that's a bad thing. Well, why, or are a good both, thing. why are both 
bad or, you know. No, in the headlines, they make them bad, right? The prices are skyrocketing. Oh, I see. War, run, think, run, run, run. Oh my gosh, I have to buy something. So buyer or seller, it depends. So, yeah, yes. exactly. So let's mm. say I'm a young couple trying to get into this market. I'm thrilled about that headline. Because sure. that gives me a sense that maybe things are getting more affordable for me. Really? When it says it's going up? No, down. when it says it's going down. The yeah, recent okay, headlines that. said we're going to drop by 14 point cent, whatever. Prices are coming down. Yes. If I'm, I'm a thrilled. young couple trying to get into the real estate market, Vancouver, that's good news. Yeah, if I, but if I own a home and they say it's going up by 14.8, I'm thrilled, but you say it's really not. Yeah, well, because your, your price, your house hasn't gone up 14.8%. And, and last but not least, let's be realistic 14.8% percent over two years how how could you ever be anywhere near that kind of decimal point accuracy seriously exactly it's I totally impossible. get it uh, if you buy a, the proper stock maybe double your money <laughs> yeah but, but even 0.8 percent guessing on what the average price is it's impossible I get it and, and you say uh, like when you see a headline like no one can afford Vancouver real estate because the average price is now over a million dollars it's just not true not true. People can't afford Vancouver real estate because there are places you can buy for three hundred thirteen thousand. Yes. Okay. And, and know what's yeah. funny is that you could just go to Surrey or Maple Ridge or you know, especially Surrey because it's got the LRT that comes right, right. down here. Get fabulous, uh, fabulous uh, new condos mm -hmm. that have great views and are brand new, and they're right by the the uh, LRT for much less. If you, sure. you're still only twenty minutes, twenty five minutes away from downtown. Right. Vancouver. Or you can live in a trendy neighborhood and live in a closet. That's exactly your it. choice. Your choice. Yeah. Lifestyle choice. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And some people would prefer you. We just yeah. talked to Jillian Harris, and yes. she said she can live small. Yeah. She likes to live small, and she'd rather, rather live in a fab little small apartment than in a giant mansion. So there you are. Yeah. Interest rates uh, will go to double digits like in the 1980s. Headline says, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And, then, and that, that's probably one of the biggest myths that people are afraid of. of it. And there's, there's two components to this. Number one. First of all, if you look at the world economic situations, there's some legitimate things to be concerned about with what's happening in Greece and Europe. You noticed. The Euro <laughs> exactly. I just reading the Globe and Mail today mm -hmm. about uh, the difficulties between the Republicans and Democrats agreeing mm -hmm. on the debt ceiling in the United States. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is we're going to have all these factors are going to be a drag on the economic recovery in the United States and by default, it's going to be a drag on our economic recovery. All these factors means it's going to be very difficult for the Bank of Canada to raise rates. So yes, there is a need for interest rates to go up. Yes, we are at rock bottom historic rates, so they're not going to mm -hmm. stay here forever. They do need to go up, but because of the global economic pressures, they will not skyrocket. So we need to put perspective in there. They will go up. I think you're going to see a 2 to 3% increase, but that is hardly skyrocketing. And how, long three, over, how long of a period? No, over about two to five years. And, yeah, and this is not so lock in, don't lock in. Well, let, let's variable. Put it, let's Pete's put it got this way: if, if you so so, let's say that you're comfortable playing the variable rate game. I would tell you to take the variable rate today, but set your payments to the th two to three percent higher. So you'll do two things: one, you'll accelerate debt reduction, so that when rates go up and when your mortgage comes up for renewal, you'll have a lower principal balance. Oh. Yeah, right. That's smart. And your budget's genius, already. I'm telling you, your budget. Genius. Your budget's already acclimatized it. But here's another thing, Fanny. If you are really, really afraid <laughs> about rates skyrocketing, do you know that you can get five-year money for just about five percent today? No, ten five-year year money. Ten, sorry, ten-year ten money. Ten-year money for yeah. five percent. For uh, uh, today's rate, five, five point one four for ten-year mortgage. So <laughs> if. In 10 years, if the world goes into the crapper yeah. and whatever happens and your values go down but you're in a long-term hold and rates skyrocket, you know what? Chances are within 10 years it'll all go back to normal because you know, there's, never been, there's never been a time when things didn't crash but come back. Okay, Thank so goodness. So take a 10-year mortgage mm -hmm. and relax. So Sleep if well. you need a mortgage for an investment property. Big, big difference. Now, Pete shouldn't answer this question because <laughs> it, is a, it, it might sound self-serving. <laughs> what I'm saying is that if I am going to go and get a mortgage on my house, I can use generally just about any mortgage broker mm -hmm. and or banker. Okay, your home mortgage broker, yes. fine. Yeah. Sure, and because the, you know, the, the deal is the deal. Investment property, completely different game. You need to, and I've, I've been doing this for almost 20 years now, that you need to have a mortgage broker on your side who understands investment properties, understands how to get the best deal, and more importantly, how to pitch your deal to the bank so they say yes. And, and what's really, really important right now is that 
that mortgage broker, the investment mortgage broker, what they do is they better have a long-term plan for you because if they put you in the wrong bank early in this game, um, you're going to hit a brick wall. You might not be able to get more than one or two investment property mortgages because you've used up mm. cap space. It's a big chess game, and only only somebody who really, really understands it who can gets do that. it. And whether you're buying a commercial property or a single family, if, as thing. investment, doesn't matter. So it's not about what you're buying as investment. It wrecked property. Well, it gets back to having a plan so that everything you're doing is is designed with an end result in mind. So like I talk about in my book, uh, we start with the end result in mind, reverse engineer, work backwards mm -hmm. to find out what's the best strategy for today. Yeah. But the key is if you just go down and talk to your local bank or broker the way you do with your principal residence, then it's just about the interest rate and the focus is on the interest rate. In the big, for a real estate investor, Rate's important, but the plan is more important. Okay, always. Strategy. The yeah, plan. Always, always. Now we only have a minute, but saw a big house go on auction in the news. Yes, yes. Think, I'm going to auction to buy a house. Good idea, bad idea? Uh, they're just not going to happen here. I think that the, the Canadian Real Estate Association Competition Bureau uh, had that agreement where they're opening up MLS, et cetera. There's all a bunch of entrepreneurs trying different things on selling properties. In Canada, we already have auctions, but it's a typical Canadian auction where there's no risk to it. So <laughs> I, I list my property. My realtor says, okay, we're, all bids come in by Thursday at 8 and then we open them, but as the vendor, yeah. I don't have to accept them. Okay, so it's a little more serious than buying a bicycle at auction. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot more serious. Yes. And I've seen in two or three cases, people pay above list price through an auction. Oh, not good. Yeah. Oh, nice to see you again. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our Even pleasure. though you didn't wear your hockey jerseys, there'll be a next time. <laughs> That's right. I there hear you. tell. Thank there you. There you go. We hope. We hope. Peter Kinch and Don Campbell, real estate experts.